Welcome everyone to the MPS third quarter 2024 earnings webinar. My name is Genevieve Cunningham and I will be the moderator for this webinar. Joining me today are Michael Singh, CEO and founder of MPS, Bernie Blagan, EVP and CFO, and Tony Ballo, Vice President of Finance. Earlier today, along with our earnings announcement, MPS released a written commentary on the results of our operations. Both of these documents can be found on our website. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that in the course of today's presentation, we may make forward-looking statements and projections within the meaning of the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995 that involve risk and uncertainty. Risks, uncertainties, and other factors that could cause actual results to differ from these forward-looking statements are identified in the safe harbor statements contained in the Q3 earnings release and in our SEC filings, including our Form 10-K, which can be found on our website. Our statements are made as of today, and we assume no obligation to update this information. Now, I'd like to turn the call over to Bernie Blagan. Thanks, Jen. Good afternoon, and welcome to our Q3 24 earnings call. MPS achieved record quarterly revenue of $620.1 million, 22% higher than revenue in the second quarter of 2024, and 30% higher than revenue in the third quarter of 2023. Our performance during the quarter reflected the strength of our diversified market strategy as we experienced improved ordering trends across most end markets and additionally benefited from additional revenue ramps associated with design wins secured in prior years. Let me call out a few highlights. Q3 2024 automotive revenue was up 28% sequentially with improvements in infotainment, lighting, ADOS, and body controls. Communication revenue was up 65% from the prior quarter, reflecting new product ramps for Wi-Fi optical, networking, and router solutions. Storage and compute revenue was up 25% sequentially on the strength of demand for DDR5 and SSD memory and notebooks. MPS continues to focus on innovation, solving our customers' most challenging problems, and maintaining the highest level of quality in addition, we continue to expand and diversify our global supply chain, which will allow us to capture future growth, maintain supply, supply chain stability, and swiftly adapt to market changes as they occur. Our proven long-term growth strategy remains intact as we continue our transformation from being a chip-only semiconductor supplier to a full-service silicon-based solutions provider. I'll now open the webinar up for questions. Thank you, Bernie. Analysts, I would now like to begin our Q&A session. As a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please click on the participants icon on the menu bar and then click the raise hand button. Our first question is from Rick Schaefer of Oppenheimer. Rick, your line is now open. Thanks, um, and congrats, you guys. Um, I guess I've got a two-part question, which, you know, if I could. Um, the first is on enterprise data. It looked like it was down about 15% sequentially. I didn't know if you could give some color on that. You know, is that one time in nature, or does that reflect a more sustained shift uh, in that segment <clears throat> as we look into 4Q and then into 25? And then my second part of my question, I mean, it looked like auto, and you, you listed a few of them, Bernie. Um, you know, automotive, industrial, comms, <laughs> consumer, all look like they were up uh, pretty materially sequentially. So, you know, is that, you know, how would you characterize those <clears throat> those segments, which have sort of been lagging the last few quarters? You know, you, do, you, do you feel like those have made the turn? Sure, <clears throat> Rick, this is Bernie. Um, let me start with uh, the enterprise data. Um, sequentially, we were down about 1.5%. Uh, uh, from Q2, and um, that, you know, a couple things that we've talked about. Um, one is that we don't control our customers' ordering patterns. 
So as it relates to the current quarter, um, we did see uh, a different ordering trend than we'd observed in each of the past six quarters. Um, and then as far as looking ahead, uh, we've been very open about the fact that uh, as far as supply chain security for our customers, that that's going to require a second or third uh, competitor to you know, introduce, be introduced on the share. And so there's a lot of issues here that we've been talking about and that we're managing. Um, but one very important point is that MPS's strength is in the diversity, and we don't try to call out a particular end market's results. We try to um, deliver the company in total. And that's sort of a short-term view, but Michael may have a couple comments on longer-term view. Yeah, I mean, you, you probably, everybody knows that if you look at the transcript from the last years, you know, we talk about that the market is big uh, and uh, the market is growing, or the, the AI uh, requirements uh, uh, is growing. And, and uh, so the... Um, Customers initially will take the always take the best solutions, and uh, to uh, to fulfill their needs and uh, the best solutions and also the speed of the development um, service as you as Bernie said earlier and the, and the, that's why we we occupied as a pretty large um, uh, shares in the game and. Uh, I mean, last year we uh, we said that okay, this market is too big, and uh, NPS will be always have a uh, best solutions uh, on the uh, in in this applications, and uh, um, we will talk. We also talk about in uh, the market is big. There will be a second or third or fourth supply to to join the. This segment, okay, and uh, this is the um, and the when would that happen? And uh, we don't know, okay. Um, um, <clears throat> it happened in the, in the last uh, couple of quarters, okay. And in uh, in the uh, um, next years, what we see the uh, again the market is growing very fast. We have uh, other ones like um. Uh, uh, SOC side of uh, market segments and like it hasn't really ramped up yet or start to ramp in. And the other ones like uh, uh, other hyperscales and like a uh, company, cloud com uh, uh, computing companies and, and uh, their own SOCs and their own uh, TPUs, um, they call it uh, the tensor processors. And, and uh, those one is our, uh, still, um, still small. We're ramping in the next uh, next few quarters, okay. And uh, as uh, Bernie said, that uh, NPS in the past we always emphasize diversity, and uh, we we will not be known to be an AI power supply company. Okay. And then Rick, I think you had a, a question as far as automotive and whether or not the step up that we observed from Q2 to Q3 was more of a broader trend line or if it was a one-time event. And this, we believe, is a uh, step up uh, where a lot of uh, um, uh, design wins have been waiting in the uh, pipeline for the right uh, opportunity. And so we, we do believe that, uh, uh, specific to us, not, not a discussion about the broader market, but specific to us that the number of product ramps are expected to come into uh, uh, the next, come into the stream in the next two or three quarters. Well, again, okay. As, a, as, a way, as we said many, many years ago, there's a lot of new design wins. And uh, when the ramp uh, will take off, we don't know. Will be plus minus a year or so? <clears throat> Do we care? We don't, okay? And then now, all these greenfield products start to rejuvenate, and uh, that's what you see in the in the revenue to date. And maybe one more comment, just for Rick, is that 
traditionally, you know, we'd been talking about strength in ADAS, but what you heard Bernie talk about was we saw that strength in automotive across kind of all the segments, including infotainment, body controls, uh, really a sign of those sockets that we had won previously now start generating revenue. So it was more broad-based within automotive than maybe we talked about previously. Thanks for all that color, you guys. And maybe right on that point on auto specifically, um, you know, I, I realize that this is a, a broad based uh, pickup and, and it's, you know, it's basically design wind driven uh, as all things are with you guys. Uh, but I'm, I'm curious specific. I mean, NVIDIA did I believe did really well the last year or two with drive Warren. And I know you guys do power there. So I didn't know if you could talk specifically about China auto um, and what content trends look look like for you guys there and, and maybe give a sense of how big China auto is now as a, as sort of a portion of your overall auto segment. Uh, thanks a lot. Well, China's again, <clears throat> uh, EV business is booming. And uh, now the taper off a little bit and uh, looks like it we're, we're booming again. Okay. And uh, uh, we're going the right, right direction again. So, okay. And uh, there's a lot of requirements and uh, the, uh, the infotainments and the new new type of infotainments and uh, and also the ADAS, okay, it's widely adopted in in China, and uh, um, so that's what we see um, a bigger portion of it is renting from uh, from China, and also so we see it in the, and uh, other than the ADAS, okay, we see a lot of uh, uh, other products. And uh, grow uh, will grow in uh, from Germany yeah. uh, in uh, in Germany and uh, in uh, in the U.S. Thank you, guys. Our next question is from Tori Svamberg of Stiefel. Tori, your line is now open. Yes, thank you, and uh, congratulations on the record revenue. I wanted to follow up on enterprise data. Um, obviously, I had two very strong quarters, first half of the year. It, it took a breather this quarter. But how, how should we think about that business into the December quarter? Uh, and, you know, Michael, I know you talked about many new product ramps in 2025, but just sort of specifically for Q4, how, how should we expect that business to 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 perform? As far as I know, Q4, we don't lose any shares. And uh, probably it's going to, and uh, uh, it was the same as the forecast. Okay, we don't, okay, we don't, we can't really tell. And uh, um, this forecast was given us to, to us in uh, uh, a few, a few quarters ago. And uh, we just fulfilled that, uh, fulfilled that demand. So, We'll have uh, um, uh, that's what we built for me in the, uh, in the last couple of quarters. Yeah, and I, I think as we look to the outlook and the guidance that we provided, uh, really enterprise data was you know somewhere in the you know uh, plus low single digits. So yeah. again, uh, our customers' ordering patterns are really what drives the performance there. No, that's very fair. And and the one big surprise to me this quarter was communications. Uh, I think it was your strongest growth segment this quarter. You highlighted Wi-Fi, optical networking. Um, could you maybe just uh, give us a little bit more color what's going on there? I mean, it does sound like you have some some new new segments there that you are pre penetrating, especially on the optical side. Well, the opticals in the case is a data converter. Uh, 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 data data. data uh, uh, data data communications and you know, within the data centers, okay, within the racks, okay, and uh, that's a portion of it. But that's not all of them, and okay. Other one is the new Wi-Fi format, and okay, and uh, start to uh, ramping up, okay. That's the uh, MPS have a um, have a lot of reference designs, and okay, and uh, um, and uh, that's what we see. It's across uh, uh, across the continent, okay. I mean, all these all these uh, projects turn into a revenue now. So, so I think the outlook for, again, uh, MPS specifically remains very solid. Um, generally, after you have a big uh, initial uh, stocking in a quarter with a new revenue ramp, uh, it, it tends to you know, tail off for a quarter, but uh, 
we see sustainable growth in communications through, you know, uh, the first half of 25. Great. Thank you for the color. I'll go back in line. Our next question is from Joshua Bukalter of Cohen. Joshua, your line is now open. Hey, guys. Thank you for uh, taking my question. I think in response to Rick's question, you mentioned the two factors that sort of drove the flattening out of enterprise data being order patterns and second sourcing. I guess, could you or could you maybe rank order which one of those had the bigger impact near term? And, and in particular, as we think about your customers diversifying their suppliers, are you seeing this more on AI accelerator platforms that are already in the market? Or is this tied to the newer platforms that are, are currently ramping? Thank you. So I, I think Michael <clears throat> offered that uh, in uh, um, Q4, we're not expecting uh, Q3 and Q4, uh, you know, to see, you know, share position change. Um, so that was really just trying to acknowledge um, that that is a function of being the market leader in, in, uh, in AI. And then um, over time, um, as we see a layering of all these new AI opportunities, uh, Michael referred to the TPUs, which will probably begin to ship uh, late. I don't know the TPU is uh, what I remember. The TPU maybe is uh, maybe Google's uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, names. Okay, uh, a trademark the names. Okay, to me, it's a tensor processor. Tensor okay. processor. Yeah, yeah, it's all uh, that's all it means. Okay, yeah. and. Uh, um, um, it's all really you. You uh, some of you uh, call refer this as some uh, SOCs in the game, yeah. and uh, we have uh, many design. Uh, we engage with uh, many uh, of our customers in the game, and in, uh, in uh, many years ago, and uh, those products okay is actually we see start to <clears throat> ramp yeah. in the um, in the last in the last quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But thank you for the call there. And I realize you've got, you know, content in, in multiple different sockets on many of these accelerator cards. Um, and so my question is going to try to oversimplify it. Um, but how should we think about, as, as we think about some of these new AI accelerator platforms, your content opportunity, maybe in relationship to power draw of the actual processors or any other helpful rules of thumbs you can give us as we try to fine tune our models into next year. Thank you. Well, so if you believe like our and uh, if we if you believe as we believe our products our solution is the best and uh, the most power efficient and uh, the market is uh, bigger and uh, that portion of our revenue will grow the rest of the stuff I don't get I don't, we don't care yeah. just let it happen let the numbers speak self. Thanks, guys. Our next question is from Chris Queso of Wolf. Chris, your line is now open. Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening. I, I guess the first question, um, a, a, as we look at your guidance for the December quarter, uh, you know, not, not, not a lot changing on a sequential basis. I think you mentioned that the enterprise data would be up low single digits sequentially um, in, in December. A, a, anything else that you would call out as you know, kind of growing or 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 shrinking, um, uh, you know, different from the average in December, and then following that, you know, given that enterprise data has grown as a percentage of revenue, does that affect seasonality as you look into the March quarter? Um, you know, is there anything we should be thinking about with respect to the different customer mix as we go into March? Sure. If, if you're looking at Q4 by end market, um, it, it's interesting. You have some seasonality. But uh, currently, we don't believe that any of the end markets are going to change by more than plus or minus mid single digits. Um, so it's a very, very, very narrow range that we're talking about there. And uh, when we look out into um, uh, you know the, the the momentum carried into twenty five, uh, obviously we don't guide beyond Q four. Um, but it has uh, been seasonally down quarter uh, for a lot of companies. Uh, but I don't I don't have a view on on what that's going to look like currently. Okay, thank you. So we don't essentially we don't really care. So as long as we have a design, we design, and uh, we're in the project with our customers, 
And uh, um, when those uh, rent start to, hap to happen, our customer, they, they, they don't have a clear uh, views. And uh, let those products, like I let it take the own, own course, let the number speak itself. Okay. Um, as a follow-up, as you look into next year, uh, the other part of your enterprise data business on, uh, on on traditional server, you know, that's an area that you guys have been uh, favorable on for a while, but I guess you've been waiting for the market to improve. You know, we heard some some a little better news from at least one of the, the CPU vendors this week. Can, can you give some view of, you know, kind of the share content, you know, the the, the uh, what you're seeing in, in in that part of the enterprise data business as you go into 2025? Yes, it's a good question. Okay, man. Uh, um, yes, we do see it. Okay, and uh, uh, the volume start to picking up. And uh, as we said, uh, 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 many quarter many years ago, and uh, this version, this uh, what the rapid sapphire or something. Yeah. Okay, and uh, the VR four teams and okay, we will pick up a share. So the thirteen and a half, okay, by serendipity of a of a of a shortage is okay, and we prove we're significant suppliers, okay, in the in the VR four teams, and uh, we will be a significant uh, will a one of the a uh, big supply in the in in uh in this uh, rapid sulfide groups. Yeah. And maybe just beyond just the the enterprise data segment itself, as you see those ramp, right, they'll pull through other solutions like DDR5 memory and continue to be a tailwind in some of the other segments as well. Thank you. Our next question is from William Stein of Truist. William, your line is now open. Uh, great. Thanks for taking my question. Michael, um, I know you often are involved in some um, interesting sort of sometimes idiosyncratic growth drivers for the company. I know for some time you were famously tinkering in the automotive end market um, and, and sort of searching for more effective solutions than, than what was available in the market. And um, I understand your focus has been perhaps more in the home automation market um, more recently. And I wonder if you can talk to us about, um, you know, some things that might be on the come in the next couple of years from the company in that, in that uh, end market. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, as you know, as an NPS, I like can have a, have a, a few thousands of our products. So we are in lighting. We are in okay. We we are in a thermal stat, and we are in uh, shades controls, and we are in um, all these uh, fan models and uh, security. The window actuators and uh, the window and door open and uh, actuators. And, okay, and uh, we are also making MCU mount. And uh, those MCU can be a brain of everything. Why are we just putting in a one box? And uh, we're putting a one one box with uh, with with the software. So and okay, and uh, um, we sell as a kit. Everything is a everything's including it. It's a, the key is the ease of use. I think is this um, this will change the market segment for for building automations. Uh, that's helpful. Um, maybe as a as a follow up, um, you know, you mentioned your MCUs. Now, there's another category that you entered relatively recently. You're not really known for it as much, but data converters. I know. You, I think you hired a team in that area, and you had some very good results for initial product. Maybe in the medical end market. Can you talk about um, traction in that product category, please? We we are uh, growing in that in that segment. The revenue is still small, as you know. These are uh, um, these are design cycles are very long, and okay, and also the product life cycles, 10, 20 years, okay, and uh, and it will be last forever. And uh, um, those segment win win some in in uh, some industrial site 
as well as the medical side. Okay, and we have as uh, we have more product rolling out. As a matter of fact, in the next couple of cup, next couple of quarters, some uh, family of a uh, standard product. Okay, we will we will gain more market shares in the uh, in this segment. Great, thank you. Okay. Our next question is from Ross Seymour of Deutsche Bank. Ross, your line is now open. Hi, guys. Thanks for really asking a question. Uh, I want to go back to the non-enterprise data side. I think by my math, it was up about 35 36% sequentially. I know you guys have a ton of design wins, and you're kind of just waiting for them to ramp. But the magnitude of that ramp, the diversity of it, uh, and just the commentary that bookings are improving seems to be at odds with the very muted recovery that so many of the peers are seeing. So could you just explain, do you think cyclical conditions are getting better or is this a very okay. monolithic power specific dynamic? Any sort of color on that? I, I think, Ross, uh, we're experiencing a little bit of Bye. both. Bye. Is somebody... House, uh, your house, can you mold it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, can mute it, yeah. Okay. Um, so, Ross, uh, uh, you're, you're asking the difference between uh, growth specific to us and what we're seeing in the market. And in um, the current quarter, um, or let me go back, uh, the previous uh, quarter, we actually saw uh, improvements in the ordering patterns. Um, but they're, they're not um, uh, a consistent trend. Um, but what we saw in the current quarter was a lot of new uh, revenue opportunities that we received from uh, design wins secured in previous years that were coming to the market now, particularly in communications, uh, particularly in um, uh, automotive, and then also we saw an improvement in the overall profile of the memory market. Well, as a matter of fact, we see all cross the board. Yeah. Other than AI. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the AI power, and all cross and and how are you? I guess as my follow up, whether it's in the AI side or otherwise, a lot of supply has been added to the market over the last couple of years to address shortages, et cetera. And so, a fear people have is that pricing pressure is going to ensue. Whether it's you know more competition in AI power that you mentioned earlier, or just a more aggregate, holistic increase in pricing pressure, are you guys seeing any evidence of that? Uh, well, our competitors, also some of the Chinese suppliers in the K, and uh, they they always uh, want to lower the price and to get in the market, uh, to get in the the socket. Okay, that's not the game where we played, and uh, um, so a lot of uh, uh, our customers, they don't change those socket. Don't they, they don't change the, uh, uh, our products can swap out okay, in, in, in a quick rate. And uh, those kind of things is a, in a, and also to the way emphasize diversity is not in a one segment has a, and a, and a lot of, a uh, uh, lot of shipments and okay, a lot of volumes going into the one particular, uh, particular uh, applications and, and uh, um, for examples like AI. And uh, we, we will, uh, we will uh, provide the values. Our value is the highest performance. And uh, all the other products are looking and uh, let our customers choose. And, uh, and uh, um, so the history telling us, a uh, history showed and uh, as we, as long as we we um, we operate in the same same principles, and uh, the revenue will keep growing and uh, growing the same weight. And uh, we see the uh, next couple of years, especially next next years, we see and uh, all these product will grow. And uh, and uh, um, now this we just see the first sign of it. And uh, all these uh, design wing turning into the revenue now. Thank you. Our next question is from Quinn Bolton of Needham. Quinn, your line is now open. 
Hey guys, thanks for taking my question. I guess uh, first to start off, um, I think it was for the first time ever uh, in your uh, June 10 Q, you guys disclosed um, a 10% plus customer. And I'm wondering, I know you haven't filed the Q yet, but if that's going to be an ongoing disclosure, would you be able to provide us if you had any 10% customers in the June, uh, sorry, September quarter? And if so, what percent of revenue was, was that customer? So, uh, Quinn, the, um, uh, what you're referencing is uh, basically uh, revenue exposure by direct customer and indirect. And uh, when the customer hits a certain threshold, according to um, you know, the SEC guidelines, we need to put a reference uh, uh, to that. Um, but we never put in a name out there. We, right? No, no, yeah. we do not. Yeah, this time... We will have uh, still have a one customer is bigger than ten percent. Yeah, as a bunny can check the numbers, not get there. Is that is that about right? So only two. Yeah, two customers and uh, above above ten uh, percent. Okay, um, and we'll get it's percentages in the queue. Uh, it, it's one or two. Yeah, I think it's a one or two. Yeah. Check the I, I believe is the ones and I can yeah. Bernie can check. Yeah, okay. it's no, it's it's only one. Two will be very big. Okay. <laughs> I don't I don't believe we that don't. numbers. Okay. We don't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the second question is I, I know you you, you don't want to guide to twenty twenty five yet. No, hold on a second, Tony. Could you check that? Yeah. Could you check that? Is a one or two? So no, I think the second one is a is a less than less than four percent. Yes, I'll I'll check it. Give me. 10 yeah. seconds, so I'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we are, uh, okay, this had to be on our record, okay? Yeah. And then let's make it clear. Uh, go ahead, okay. Yeah, um, maybe maybe while we're waiting for Tony, to, my second question was, um, I, I know you're not going to sort of give us specific guidance out to 2025, but the, the street is looking for, you know, continued pretty strong growth in the enterprise data segment. I know you've talked about lots of cross currents in terms of, um, expecting some additional competition to enter that market, some pricing pressure at existing customers, but you also have the ASIC designs that start to ramp next year. The street's kind of looking for that business to hit almost 1.1 billion in revenue. And just wondering if is, is that, you know, given your crystal ball, is that sort of a reasonable expectation? Do you think that, that we should be tempering expectations for that segment? Um, given some of the cross currents you've mentioned, or do you want to just Got to keep it one quarter at a time. Yes, I can tell um, very confident, confidently we will be. Uh, okay, let's say that. And uh, when this market, when this AI market turn into like a regular server market, NPS will be a significant player in that. And uh, now, this is. It's not a, uh, become a, um, uh, what do you call it? And, uh, and, uh, um, uh, uh, reach to equilibrium yet. Not a run rate. And, and not a, yeah. This is still ramping up. And, uh, it's when, when, when this segment is ramping, um, when it starts ramping, is a, it's kind of a lengthy. You don't see this thing. Okay. You don't see, you can't keep going forever. Like the first two of, uh, for since last years and the first in the first couple of this quarters, like uh, for first couple sure. of a uh, quarter in 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 this year, so, okay. And uh, next, uh, and uh, so to uh, answer your questions for next years, clearly, so, okay, we have a lot more customers. As I said earlier, so, like, they will, will start uh, to ramping those. Uh, those uh, um, design okay, um, will turn into uh, those design will turn into revenues. Michael, just to circle back uh, relative to DISTI, we'll call out two for direct. We'll call out one. Okay, uh, that that's a direct customer, not a DISTI. So it's, we'll call it one direct. We'll call out multiple DISTIs. It's right. greater than ten percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. One, one, well. Um, this deal we never come in them, okay? Because the, all the reporting we it, that's in that's in the reporting, all the design create uh, creation, all the exposures for the end customer is only one. 
the next one is uh, I believe is a less than less than it's about definitely is below five percent. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Bernie. Okay. Our next question is from Tori Svomberg of Stiefel. Tori, your line is now open. Yes, thank you. Um, I had a similar question to Quinn, but thinking more about vertical power. So enterprise data, you know, this year, more than 700 million. I, I assume the contribution from vertical power is still quite low. And, and, and if that's the case, as the market does transition to vertical power, uh, you know, uh, could we see this market base basically even accelerate over the next few years? Absolutely. Yeah. Not in the next in a few years, next few next quarters. Year. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. We, we, other, other way said that, okay, we're playing the power module, uh, market segments and like in, in, uh, since 2017. And uh, all these technology, all these uh, manufacturing uh, capabilities, and, okay, and uh, that will really benefit the, for these uh, uh, vertical power. And uh, as, the, as the speaking, now we are shipping those products in, in, in good volumes. Sounds good. Thank you. Our next question is from Ross Seymour of Deutsche Bank. Ross, your line is now open. Hi, guys. Let me thanks for letting me uh, get a little follow up snuck in here. Uh, inventory. I, I know, Michael, you and I have laughed about that many times ah, in cycles ah, in the past. That's my favorite question. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Yeah. In this instance, internal inventory came down uh, by a lot days wise. What did external channel inventory do how are you looking at that was was some of that 35 percent sequential growth that i referred to in my initial question you know a, a little bit ago inventory fill or is the channel staying lean no the, ch the channel staying lean in fact our total days uh went down in the quarter well we want to this is not good we want to build up and uh um as always, we build the inventory in the, um, it's not synced with the, with the market demand. And uh, you see our, uh, Ross, okay, you're, you're the expert of NPS, uh, <laughs> NPS inventory. If you checked like, uh, our, in our, our inventory levels, it's, it's the opposite of the market demand. And uh, now the market demands are, uh, for NPS now, it's very high. So the, implement, the inventory is low. And, uh, but we don't think that we're going to run into a shortage issues. Okay. But, uh, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's at the, uh, inventory levels, uh, is at the un, uncomfortable uh, levels. Okay. Gotcha. I guess just to clarify, Bernie, when you said total inventory actually went down, uh, you mean just total channel inventory days fell? Total channel, yeah, but, channel inventory. Yeah, yes. Channel inventory is uh, is also low. Yeah. Got it. Okay, that's it. Thanks, guys. This now concludes our Q and A session. I would now like to turn the webinar back over to Bernie. Thank you. I'd like to thank you all for joining us for this conference call and look forward to talking to you again in our fourth quarter conference call, which is likely to be in early February. Thank you. Have a nice day.